Gap's starting another video today, same day as this one. However, uh, today's task is related to the Landau now. Um, now this car has a bit of an issue. Despite it being, the body is nice, the engine bay is still shonking. This car has had a questionable history. So I don't know if you can see down there, but I'm fairly confident somebody's put a chassis rail length on, and they've certainly put through here, half a red support on, and it's welded, well, it looks like welded with an oxy torch of all things. Um, so it gives you a bit of an idea, and for some bizarre reason, somebody decided to bolt, you use all these, the bolts in here, so, and when it came time to trial fit the guards and the bonnet and stuff like that, I had a bit of a tr I had trouble, because... It was like this was too far that way, which, considering what I'm looking at, I wouldn't be half surprised if it was. Um, so I'm building a Tremel gauge, and I'll show you that process in a minute, where I'm going to use the measurements off that square coop over there, and measure this one up. That's why we've got a ported power, because I'm thinking I'm going to have to drill out these spot welds through here and down here, and put it between here and push this rail out and then weld it back in. Um, fingers crossed. I'll have to do something because yeah, the guards don't line up and I think the other ones that were on it were shonkied to fit. So we've got to do some squaring up at the front of this car. So I will be building a Tremel gauge. And you might go, what's a Tremel gauge? Well, it's something that you, a tool, a tool, piece of equipment you'd use in the crash shop. Now you can buy really fancy ones, but it's nothing more than a way of measuring, because you get... Hard to describe, but um, I had one when I was at a, I was working at Highlander Crash, uh, which was a crash shop, but I started my apprenticeship years ago. Um, we had them, and they were super heavy. They're all sort of handmade ones like this. So you get a small bit of square tube, slightly bigger square tube, so they slide in each other. You weld it, drill a hole, put a nut, put a bolt through it so you can tighten it up so it's adjustable. And then on the ends, you have a little rod that's a height adjustable as well. And basically you put it into points of the points of the body so you can so you'd put them you do your lengths and you could put it into a, a, a point that you'd know is the same on both sides and you can measure the length and then you can turn like diagonals and work out if the car is square and there is fancy ones you can buy but they're excessively expensive and they're nothing more than a way to just tell if something's out of square so i'm build, building one today because i need one or i'd like to be damn sure and uh, basically it's going to be square tube, inside square tube. I'm going to drill a hole, weld a nut, put a bolt so it's adjustable and I can tighten it. And on the ends I'm going to, because I need some steel bars, and I'm a bit of a use what you got. I'm going to cut the steel bars off the end of that, because they look about perfect. Put a point on one end of them. Drill a hole, another hole so it slides down. Put another hole with a nut and a bolt so it's adjustable. So I've got height adjustable and then it's length adjustable and then that's it it's just two bits of tube with two fingers poking off either end that you can use to square things up it's a very basic piece of equipment but super handy so we're going to walk you through this one today Alrighty, so we're making good progress i cut the um the side off the uh the wheel uh dolly um my theory goes, I've got nine of them, um, and they're not that good, to be perfectly honest. You put a D, I've had those bend under the front of that Falcon over there, if you didn't get it 100% centered, so I'm not super stoked with them. If I had one of those, if I was going to modify those, I'd uh, strengthen up where the feet bolt in. Um, but I needed the steel rod, because this is going to be, this is like the perfect thing. So I've welded a nut to here, so you can go adjust, tighten, done, not moving. So now I'm going to do the same, so I'm going to put a hole through there and through the other side. And then we have height adjustable, and then we'll just do us another bolt and nut on the side so that it goes through and touches the side of this. And obviously when it's tightened it will put pressure on it, this won't go anywhere. So. Effectively, 
just imagine that on both ends. That's what a Dremel gauge is. It's just, and I've sharpened it. I'll probably stab some someone at this at the moment. Um, sharpened it so it's a point, and then usually, unfortunately, there's no bolts in the front of this car I can use. But the reason it's pointed is you can say you wanted to take a measurement. You can poke it in a bolt hole, and it'll be dead center, or like that. Or if there was a bolt there, you could um, poke it in. But that's that's how they work. Um, they're a, a very handy tool to have if you don't if you're going to do any sort of big measuring or You want to do some vehicle straightening. I would strongly recommend you have one of these because this is one of the most Highly used tools in a crash shop You would not believe it, but it is um, Everyone's every shop's got one if not a couple Because it's super super handy and this is basically me showing you how to make one so uh, and it couldn't actually be simpler. I just happen to happen to have this leftover steel from building my uh, engine stand up there, engine run stand. So you need basically one bit that fits inside another, and that's that gets your length. I'm going to cut it down a little bit. It's a bit too long at the moment, so I'm going to make it. Oh, I'll cut a foot off it at least, because um, it needs to be uh, it needs to be able to go short distances too. You can also make little baby ones too. So this is just me mem remembering what we had in the crash shop about six years ago at the one shop I worked at was handy but this is all it was um, so I'm gonna make it there we go we got one half done uh, pointed thinged I uh, it's a a nut a bolt and then this once was one of those stupid things you used to get on rocker covers and who would have thought they'd actually be useful to actually tighten up the bolt so I might I don't know if I have a foot I don't have I don't have many of them but I know I've got at least two of them so I'll put them at either end on this bit I really want a third one to put on the top of that bolt so it's you know you can do it with your hand so the idea of this is so you can shorten them up and get your heights I'll show you how it works at the end of this video but I've just chopped down this bar so all I gotta do is drill a hole through here like I've done here up there, another hole on the side where it weld a nut through and then basically copy this onto that piece and then I have a whole tremor gauge which I can use for squaring up cars which will be super handy. Um, if you're trying to square up a car with that one I think <laughs> good luck to you. They're almost better than a tape measure because tape measures can move and bend whereas you can mount these pretty rigidly and they sort of don't move. Um, yeah, so that's a little uh, little thing we're playing with. Alrighty, I took this outside because it was easier that way. But here we go. One homemade, but works beautifully, Tremel gauge. Um, so, what the basic go is, when you walk this over to a car, <sighs> so you can... This is real. Okay, so I've officially decided this is really, really effing difficult to do this one-handed. But basically, you can poke it in a bolt hole and obviously that's not in the right spot because you know, I'm one-handed and holding the camera so it's impossible to do this. But you use it to um, square up cars and stuff like that. So there's a little uh, handy little device that if you're going to do some pretty epic um, vehicle pulling apartness, um, there's a device that I recommend you make and use for squaring up a car. The joys of being a panel beater, eh? You get experience in areas that uh, most people don't get to dabble. So there'll probably be a few people who toy with cars that didn't even know this thing exists. And yeah, this is the home-built version. But uh, you can buy a really, really expensive version that's basically got an inbuilt tape measure in it and all sorts of stuff so you can get it 100%. But this does really well and believe it or not, that's all you really need because you because it's adjustable you set it to a point hook it in and it won't move and then you can use it to um determine how far out something is and i've used those absolute butt loads in the crash game so yeah so you go Oop. mint i really wish i had another one of these t pieces for here that bugs me a little but um because you can 
and then you can stand on this bit and make it taller. Neat, hey? And yeah, so that's, I don't know what square tube that one is, it must have just been lucky. Yeah, that's why I need the T-piece there, because I need to be able to tighten that up. But that's basically what you use. Uh, so this is 25 mil square tube, I think. And this one's, uh, you'd have to assume it must be 30 mil square tube or something. Because it fits in it beautifully. But I do hope this is helpful. Um, I'm going to tackle this very shortly, but unfortunately because I'm one when I have the camera in my hand, I can't do three things at once but I'm going to use it on this in a second and see how far out that front end is so this is a little bonus video today but um, I'll probably keep it going for a bit longer and uh, unbox the porter power too just worked out I think I can do this watch out for the wind noise too but what I've done is I've stretched it out as you do and I've hooked it into that back guard bolt and I've got it sitting down in the corner of the, I'm guessing I'm going to call it engine base skirt. So, yep, and yep. So we know that's right, because this side, that top corner wasn't crushed, and here wasn't damaged. So we're going to go off the side that's supposed to be good first. And you just take your measurements, which are a nice solid bar, and you go over here. Hopefully, I get this one camera. Plonk it into that hole there, and what do you know? miles out and I reckon from memory that I reckon it was about an inch out out of square which would explain why I couldn't get the guards to fit properly so somewhere really somewhere we're gonna to have to gain some width in this engine bay somehow and I this one's gonna test the brain a little bit because I'm not sure where I'm gonna gain it the only thing I could think of is um, that the rad support's too narrow or something like that. But that's miles out of square. Because if it was square, they'd both be exactly the same, wouldn't they? Um, so, that's basically the gist of that. So next thing I'm going to do is go to that coupe over there that's actually never been in a praying in the front and actually um, put this on it and uh, get its measurements and see where it's sitting. Well, that idea was sound until I had a closer look at the car. And this car has been hit in the front as well so there goes my ability to get measurements off a straight car as you can tell it's got a bit of bog in the front of it I was looking here and I was like why isn't it why is it so far out it's like this car's too narrow in the front end and it's because it is so damn and blast there goes my measurements off a supposedly straight car <sighs> Why are they always crashed? Oh, I don't know, because people thrash a little snot out of them. Ah, fuck it. Oh, I'll just have to wing it off the other car and literally just put its guards on and square it up to itself, basically. Get a happy medium. That sucks. It was it was working. Some of it, I could get some measurements off. Um, I do love a good tremble gauge. And it works beautiful. So we established that bare minimum, it's um, at least 10 mil too narrow between here and here. So the next trick is working out how on earth we're going to gain a bit of width in the engine bay. I'm thinking I'm going to have to be a bit creative. They gave it a red hot go, but they got it wrong. It's interesting that it's a little bit hinky pinky. So I think I'll stick with my original plan where I will drill out these spot welds, which look to be factory. Like it looks like they put the whole corner on in one piece, which tells me that there's a chance that these spot welds are still factory to whatever car this originally came from so I think that's where I'm gonna have to gain a bit of width because the guard when you bolt it on is just too close um, the downsides with these cars being nearly 50 years old they've been hit a few times and you just depending on whether or not they've been uh, 
repaired properly because um, repair procedures and things were very different back then to what they are now. Oh well, I'll just wing it. But that's we're going to open up the portal power kit in a second and show you what the fun and games are going to use with that on this. Alrighty, kids, a present from me to me. Wow, look, it says net weight 31 kilos. No wonder it weighed a bit. No, gross weight's 33. So, in this box, funny they think you can carry it from that one handle. Oh, grasshopper. Yes, it is definitely 31 kilos. Let's have a looky. Uh, now we're cooking with gas. And the stupid thing is, I bet none of this will go back in the box ever again. Or we'll never fit quite like that. So we've got a spreader, some prongs, a couple of feet, different types. The ram. Yeah, they put their own little plug on it from Paramount Browns. There's the, the ram there. So, 10 tons. Now this is the cheapest porta power kit you can buy floating unfortunately this one time total tools did not have the cheapest equipment it was paramount browns by about a hundred dollars and in my experience with porta powers they're all the same so that's a fun piece of kit and that'll be very very handy with fixing the front of the land out um yeah and uh we'll see how we go with it I will tell you one thing, these cars are notoriously difficult to get the panel gaps right because they're not built to an exact science, they're built by people who make mistakes. That's why they, the car, older cars have about 15 millimeters of tolerance built into the modern cars have about 5. So I've got this within 3 millimeters of closeness, actually in a couple of spots it's absolutely spot on so I'm aligning this the bonnet the back edge of this bonnet to the roof and the wind, window frame anything that's not changed so that's how I'm working back to front and that's how you should do it really and uh, especially with like say on a four door or something you always work from the back quarter panels are fixed you do your rear doors you get them lined up the rear quarters you get your front doors line up them and you got guards to them and then all the stuff and you, so on and so forth so I'm working from the back of the car, which is straight to the bonnet. So what I've done is I've put all the hinges, they're all lined up, undone them all, jammed the bonnet as far forward as it can go, just for so there's no, you know, potential wobbliness. And then I've got it lined up with the back to the roof and to about a thousand different points through here up to the windscreen. And the, the sucky thing is they... The cars aren't built brilliantly. You can see this, the lip here is only a little bit overlapped and it's really heavily hanging off the edge there. So they're not, they're not an exact science, these cars, and they never have been and they never will be. So if anybody has one that's dead straight and um, has perfect panel gaps, somebody has spent a long time getting them right. So with that being said, the bonnet is aligned to the back of the car. So everything on the front, if it doesn't land dead center of this pin, is off. And... So obviously it's going to be a bit too far forward because the bonnet's too far forward. But we're not interested in the too far forwardness, we're interested in the how far out of square it is. So I don't know if you can see the center of that hole, but she's definitely off center and i think it's out by about 10 millimeters i reckon that's the magic number because they're all the way across so that's um i'm thinking about this this could really do with going that way but it can't it has no more wiggle room and you really shouldn't slot bolt holes and things you really shouldn't slot bolt holes um you should get it right so this whole front end needs to go that way. And I don't know if it needs to go that way or it needs to be cut right where this person cut it. 
and that half needs to go that way because I think having a bit of a sus that I think this half as in all three here is all perfect because it hasn't been molested or anything and you look down here and this is nice there's no no rivets have been stretched or anything that's all perfect and then you get over here and you've got this huge honking gap here and you can see that it's pulled away from it so I think I need to run a blade through here and through here and put my porter power in the engine bay and push it down from somewhere quite sturdy up to here and push this whole corner out and then square it up and weld it back in so we're starting with the bonnet that definitely tells me it's out of square the tremel gauge working off the points tells me it's out of square so established that the front of this car would you believe is out of square <laughs> it doesn't look it but that's why we have tools like tremel gauges and the old tape measure so and that, I get I get super worried when you see people taking falcon coops like the some people don't know how to do them like um, the dude in New Zealand who I think it's Streetwise Automotive he does some incredible work he does he follows my uh, Graham's Restoration Facebook page um, and he he doesn't I, don't, I would like to have the uh, person's money who's paying him <laughs> um, a lot of hours in it but the people who take them right apart down to nothing scares the living pants off me because I'm like yes but did you measure that <laughs> I, I'm just as a panel guy I sort of I get worried I spend too long thinking about it. I wonder how bad that is <laughs> or if it's square or something like that but there are some people out there doing these things who do a very very good job um, but yes this car is out of square it's a problem we have to rectify but that's going to be for another uh, video and I'll probably won't film it because I'll need to actually focus on doing it and getting it right rather than filming it so this is a little bonus video today so you get two today um, on this and a little hint on how to line cars up you always work from the back to the front and do remember that these cars are notorious for being badly made I know people go no they don't make cars quite like they used to that's right they make them better than they used to that's um, my opinion on it anyway nothing quite fits together like a Hyundai or a Toyota or something like that they just just go together the joys of mass production and machine work fitment you could take a door off one car and go straight on another one you do it to one of these and pff, good luck to you the only doors that fit them are the ones the factory put on because they spent a while getting them right and if you've seen any footage of them being built back in the day you can see those body guys they tweak and stretch and abuse them so they fit and even then they're not perfect I don't know, like people who think car, old cars are amazing they're not I just like them because they got character anyway enough chit chat um, I hope you enjoyed this little bonus video for today um, and we'll catch you up when I've done the straightening and I'll walk you through the process of doing it <laughs>